the World Bank rejecting a request from El Salvador to assist the country in implementing Bitcoin as legal tender. Reuters reporting Wednesday the bank, which is an international financial institution offering grants and loans to low-income countries, said Bitcoin is, quote, not something the World Bank can support given the environmental and transparency shortcomings. But El Salvador leaders are undeterred. The ambassador of El Salvador to the United States, Melania Mayorga, tweeting her arrival with more than 30 crypto entrepreneurs Wednesday to find ways to boost the economy and make the country's new signed Bitcoin law a success. And our next guest has been camping out in El Salvador to see history in the making. He's been taking meetings with President Nayib Bukele and discussing how Bitcoin can bring opportunities to the developing nation. Joining us now is Peter McCormick, host of the What Bitcoin Did podcast. Welcome to the show, Peter. Hi, Christine. How are you? Very well. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, Bitcoin, as you know, is legal tender in El Salvador, and that this is taking Bitcoin, the great financial experiment, to the next level. All eyes are on whether this country of six and a half million people can make Bitcoin thrive. What now? Good question. Uh, I think the next important step is some clarity from the government regarding what the next steps are in terms of infrastructure. They've got quite uh, an aggressive target to have this in place within 90 days. So I think the most important thing is uh, clarity because having spoken to some of the locals here, the questions being asked are, you know, what is Bitcoin? People want to understand what it is. So there's a requirement for, requirement for education. There is a requirement for economic agents to accept Bitcoin. So they need to understand what the infrastructure is. Um, and also there is kind of a fear of scammers. Uh, unfortunately, in this industry, we, as we know, there's lots of scammers. So I think the next step is clarity. I know the government is working on this and I, I know they're going to be announcing some things soon. So I think that's what's next. But everyone in Bitcoin can also help. I know people are translating educational content into Spanish, which is great. But but yeah, we just need some clarity. Right. You mentioned the law will go into effect 90 days after its official publication. That's not a lot of time. Does El Salvador have the knowledge, technical expertise to roll this thing out correctly? I mean, that's a question for them rather than me. All I can do is give feedback from my meeting with the president and his brothers. And I was you know, very impressed with their level of knowledge of Bitcoin, but also their ambition. Um, I think the aggressive target is so it happens. I mean, you've put in a, you, know, you give yourself a year to do this, then perhaps it takes president. a year, you give yourself 90 days, you, you make it work. There. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, look, it's an aggressive target, um, but, you know, you create a target, you put a marker in the sand, you go for it. And I, I think the they will get the support from the Bitcoin community they require. And, and I have every confidence that they will deliver against it. Look, will there be speed bumps? Possibly. You know, will there be hiccups? Possibly. You know, this is the first country in the world to implement Bitcoin as legal tender and, and require economic agents to accept it. This is you know, a very ambitious project, but we should commend them and we should do everything we can to support them. So, you know, three mo months ago, Jack Mahler's, I believe, started to make experiments with strike into the communities there in El Zante on Bitcoin Beach, as well as uh, the folks at Lightning. How has, uh, and are you in El Zante right now? I mean, are people oh, using yeah. Bitcoin? How, how is it being used right now? Are, do people, you, you mentioned people are trying to still figure out what Bitcoin is and how to use it. I mean, it seems like there's a bit of a barrier there. Well, no, no. So firstly, I am in El Zante. Um, I first came here about 20 months ago to see the very early stages of the Bitcoin project by Bitcoin Beach. So um, we should commend them for everything they've done to create this, the, the team, uh, uh, Michael Peterson, Jorge, and everyone, on, everyone has been working on that. In El Zonte, there is no issue. Uh, um, they are continuing to educate people. Um, almost everybody accepts Bitcoin. A lot of them understand Bitcoin. Look, at different levels, but there is no issue in El Zonte. And El Zonte is an example that this can be done. Uh, the when I raise those questions uh, from other locals, it tends to be outside of El Zonte. People maybe in the city or up the coast of El Tunco, people who haven't have had the exposure to Bitcoin. Uh, so I just think this is. What they really need to do is take the program that has worked very well in El Zonte and expand that mm -hmm. nationwide.
that's, but yeah, but uh, sorry, and to answer your other question, people are using Bitcoin here. I'm using Bitcoin. I'm using the Lightning Network. I am buying cups of coffee. I am buying dinner. I'm buying, um, uh, I, I bought some batteries the other day, and everyone's <laughs> accepting Bitcoin, and they're using it, and it is a medium of exchange. The network works. It's operational, and it's working. Yeah, well, I'm sure Bitcoin Beach was the reason why President Bukele felt confident enough to have this legislation passed in the first place. Uh, but, you know, they've also reached out to the country that is, has reached out to the World Bank. They've been rejected uh, for technical assistance. The World Bank saying they can't give support given the environmental and transparency shortcomings of Bitcoin. Not very surprising, though. Uh, but would love to hear your comments on, on that development. I mean, look, are we surprised that the World Bank doesn't want to support Bitcoin, uh, something they cannot control, an open, free, and monetary system, a protocol which anyone in the world can plug into uh, and use without, without any intermediaries, uh, a free system that provides economic freedom? Uh, are we surprised? Of course we're not. Uh, look at their response. They've talked about their concerns with energy, the same FUD that's being delivered uh, across the board now, whether it's weak journalists or Elon Musk, people who don't realize that miners buy energy from the same network as everybody else. They buy it direct for suppliers and they buy it uh, uh, from the grid. Uh, but it is miners who are constantly looking at where they can get lowest prices from and hopefully that is clean energy. Here in El Salvador, they're looking at geothermal mining and Paraguay, they've got um, um, hydro electric dams to provide mining, looking to co-locate miners there, they're actually driving forward greener uh, aspects of the mining. I'm not surprised by the World Bank. I, I would imagine there are pressures out elsewhere. I imagine they fear Bitcoin, but do you know what? Mm -hmm. It's not going to stop the government of El Salvador. They're still going to continue with the project. They will be successful. And if the World Bank won't support them, then we as Bitcoiners will support them. Fascinating. You know, back to, you know, on the ground, what are some of the challenges? How about the internet there? Confirmation times on the network, maybe they don't have to deal that with uh, lightning, but, you know, how, how, how is that working among people being able to transact in a timely and efficient manner? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we must be clear, there is the base chain of the Lightning Network. The, the base chain can take around an hour for, uh, for you to receive your six confirmations, but most of the people here operating directly on the Lightning Network, I've only moved Bitcoin on the Lightning Network here. It is instant and virtually free, and it works. Um, I think you raise a, another good question. Um, as I'm aware, mobile adoption is at something like 150%. So everybody pretty much has a mobile phone. So that's not going to be a, an issue. In terms of internet coverage, I don't know the stats. But if that's an infrastructure requirement, I'm pretty sure that Bukele has plans for this and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll source the necessary uh, investment okay. to make that happen. Um, but I, you know, everybody is looking and asking questions and pointing out all, all the you know, potential issues or stumbling blocks, which is right, we should ask mm -hmm. that. But also, we should also be focusing on the benefits of this. This is going to bring economic freedom to a country which is being debased because it's dollarized, but isn't receiving stimulus checks. This is a country with, where people are poor and they have the opportunity to save in a currency which over time will appreciate and bring prosperity and, and, and also increase security. There's so many benefits to this, but everybody else seems to ask the question of the negatives. We should right. also be focused on the benefits that the people here. Absolutely, and I think you're uh, listing them out very eloquently. But uh, back to some uh, concerns, though. <laughs> what about the volatility? Uh, that's a, that's a also a common critique. Uh, what what? How do locals deal with the volatility? If I'm, you know, buying a bottle of water one day, and I'm a grocer and I'm taking the cash, I, I want to make sure that the price of that of the money I receive in Bitcoin doesn't fall and cut in half the next day. Well, the interesting thing about volatility, that's about education and experience. Um, everybody who is a Bitcoin understands volatility and has found a way to manage it. The, the, the criticism of volatility comes from external people who always are looking for ways to criticize Bitcoin, whether it's blaming, uh, uh, accusing Bitcoin of only being for criminals and terrorists, blaming energy sources, and volatility is just another FUD attack. Bitcoiners understand volatility. They understand that for a network to go to zero to 10 trillion has to have volatility. It can't go up in a straight line. It has to have markets that are traded, has to have volatility. There is no so solution to volatility itself. It's part of the market, but there is a solution to helping people understand it, which is education. And volatility will affect people in El Salvador the same way it affects me, the same way it affects you. You know, 
Bitcoin is, a, is primarily right now a savings technology. If you're operating a business, I would recommend doing what I do. Every time I get paid in Bitcoin, 75% is transferred into uh, my local currency, which is the pound, and 25% stays in Bitcoin. And I save that Bitcoin for long term, and I hold my local currency for operating my business so I can ride out the volatility. Mm -hmm. I would be educating people exactly the same here in El Salvador, that they must manage volatility in a way that it doesn't affect their day-to-day -day business operations. And the great thing is the government has said, while they require every economic agent to accept Bitcoin, they can immediately, immediately transfer that into the dollar. Mm -hmm. and, and how are locals accumulating Bitcoin? Uh, well, there's a number of ways. Primarily earning it here because they run businesses that accept Bitcoin. Uh, buying Bitcoin here is quite difficult at the moment because there are no exchanges operational here. So some people are trying to get into it. There is the there is the Bitcoin ATM here in El Zonte, which is used for people to acquire Bitcoin. But you know, we know these ATMs have higher fees. Um, most people here, it seems to be that they're earning it and perhaps even receiving some from donations. Okay, see. Um, and you're stirring up controversy on Twitter. Peter, it's no surprise, but the, <laughs> this time poking at Brock Pierce, a crypto investor, co-founder of Tether EOS and a long list of projects, ran for president. Anyway, he's part of a delegation of crypto entrepreneurs. He's calling it the official Bitcoin delegation alongside the El Salvador ambassador to the U.S. But you're not a fan. Why is that? Well, listen, look, you just have to look at someone's track record. Uh, you know, Brock Pierce. Uh, was involved in EOS, which siphoned $4 billion of Bitcoin from investors into a, what is just uh, one of the worst shitcoins that has existed, has absolutely no utility at all. He also uh, was meddling in the Mt. Gox case and potentially delaying disbursements to the, the Mt. Gox, um, the Mt. Gox uh, 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 victims. And he just has a track record of inv investing in shitcoins and all kinds of crap. Now, this is a country which has made Bitcoin legal tender alongside the dollar. Nothing else is legal tender. And there's been a lot of people who have been coming down here for the two years, helping, supporting, observing, communicating what's happening here. As soon as the government made an announcement, suddenly all the charlatans that we have our industry is surrounded with have started saying, oh, we're going to come, we're going to help, we'll invest money. You know, I spoke to the president about this. I said to the president specifically, this is what's going to happen. You need to be very careful of these people. They're going to come in. They're going to say it's about Bitcoin, and they're going to try and slip the shit coins under the radar. I said, you need to be wary of them. I told them about Brock Pierce. I said, you know, be wary of this guy. He, he is, has a history of shit coins. And, you know, we've got enough work here to do to explain Bitcoin to people and how that works and the technology. And, you know, as you mentioned, the volatility, they don't need explaining Ethereum and, you know, Bitcoin Cash and Come Rocket and all kinds of crap coins that we have everywhere. You know, this is a project about human freedom for the people of El Salvador. And this is about bringing prosperity and security to the country, not some casino where people could lose money and get confused. So mm -hmm. I was very direct with the president about that. I also know they spoke to Jack Malice. He was very direct about the same. Uh, I went to see Brock last night. I asked him a number of questions. I said, are you staying here in uh, El Zonte? They came for dinner. They had a saxophone player. They ate, they drank, they left. You know, they didn't spend any time in the community. They didn't uh, donate. Uh, they didn't go to the vendors. You know, they, I think these people are opportunis opportunists and they're just coming in, you know, at, at the moment where it, all the hard work's been done and trying to inject their crap coins into this place. And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry if I sound uh, uh, aggressive or if I'm rude, well, but passionate. I just have zero tolerance for this. Well, no, I just have zero tolerance for this because it's not that I care if people buy, you know, shit coins. Go ahead, buy any shit coin you want. I don't really care. But what we have here is a very important project for the world. This is the first country that's brought Bitcoin as legal tender. This has a chance to really raise the standard of living for these people who've been through a lot. They've been through a civil war. They are a poor country. They don't have their own currency. What we don't need is a bunch of people coming in and selling or you know, spearheading projects for all these different types of tokens, which is not going to help the country in any way at all. So, yeah, and I told Brock how it is, and <laughs> that's it. All right. Uh, one last question before we wrap, Peter. It's been a really fascinating conversation. Um, uh, there's been some blowback for provision in the legislation that requires Salvadorans to accept Bitcoin as payment if offered. Some people say no one should be forced to accept a currency, even Bitcoin. Your thoughts on that? Listen, it's a legal tender of the, co the country. Um, they, ex they can accept Bitcoin and they can accept uh, the dollar. What the government has said is that if you do not want to hold Bitcoin, then you can instantly transfer, transfer that into Bitcoin. Now, I think we need clarity. We need to wait and hear for the government, see, see how they're saying they're going to implement this, the infrastructure for this. 
But I think it was a bold and courageous move because what that's going to do is that's going to uh, encourage Bitcoin to come into the, the country, circulate within the country, which is going to offset the debasement that's come from the dollars and hopefully see a net increase in the uh, wealth of the country. So I, I think we need clarity on how this is going to work, but I think it's a great decision.